Week 7 action at Arrowhead where Eric Berry leads the Chiefs defense and Tyreek Hill is the last man standing on offense as they take on the winless Bengals. After the Chiefs go 3 and out on their opening drive, the Bengals look to throw and it's Andy Dalton with all the time in the world before he finally throws downfield and finds a wide open Jordan Matthews who runs over Kendall Fuller and then gets pushed out of bounds at the Chiefs 48. Next play, it's Dalton to Matthews again on the quick out. He's able to avoid Eric Murray and get up the sideline for another pickup of 32 to the Chiefs 16 but on third and four Dalton looking to throw and once again getting great protection but the coverage is there as he tries to squeeze it into AJ Green but it's incomplete and the Bengals have to settle for a field goal and a 3-0 lead. Chiefs again go three and out and on third and six Andy Dalton finds a diving John Ross for a pickup of 15 and a first down but on third and 13 backside pressure from Justin Houston results in an Andy Dalton sack and a Bengals punt and then with three minutes and 32 seconds left in the first quarter. The Chiefs finally get their first first down of the game as Henny hits Chris Conley for nine yards to the Chiefs 33. But later in the drive, Henny finds Demetrius Harris over the middle who picks up 15 before he gets walloped and fumbles. Sean Williams recovers and brings it back to the Chiefs 42 where on the first play, Dalton looks to throw and finds tight end Tyler Eifert for a pickup of 13 yards and a first down. Three plays later, third and three, Dalton play fakes and hits Giovanni Bernard just past the marker for a pickup of four and a first down and four plays later it's Joe Mixon punching it into the end zone from two yards out to extend the lead to 10. After yet another Chiefs three and out Dalton looks to throw and finds a diving Tyler Boyd for 12 yards and a first down then on third and 15 Dalton looks to throw again and dumps it underneath well shy of the marker but on the tackle Kendall Fuller gets nailed with the 15 yard face mask penalty to give the Bengals the first but on third and seven Kendall Fuller atones for his mistake knocking the Andy Dalton pass away to bring up fourth down where the Bengals send out Randy Bullock who it's hard to imagine wasn't affected by the teleporting ref at midfield as he misses the 63 yard field goal badly giving the Chiefs their best chance to score thus far but they would squander that opportunity and on third and 12 for the Bengals Andy Dalton throws well short of the marker but again a face mask penalty is going to give the Bengals a first down on third and long however the Chiefs defense would stand tall again as this time the stop comes in the form of a D Ford sack his fifth of the year forcing a Ryan Quigley punt who with the wind at his back booms an 85 yard kick that bounces inside the 10 and out of bounds inside the one. Chiefs would give it right back and on third and 10 Dalton hits AJ Green coming back to the ball and the tackle stops him shy of the marker with 57 seconds and rather than go for it Cincinnati sends out Randy Bullock for his second 60 plus yard field goal of the quarter but still feeling the effects of his paranormal experience earlier would not miss this one as well so for the second time Chiefs with an opportunity to get points and this time they would capitalize as Chad Henney throws a strike to Tyreek Hill who spins his way inside the 15 for a first down then on second down Henney looking to throw and finds Hill again who picks up eight to the seven and with no timeouts in 10 seconds Henney throws a fade to Sammy Watkins over his head and the Chiefs settle for a field goal and go into half down 10-3 but to start the second half the levies on the Chiefs defense break as Andy Dalton hits a wide open A.J. Green who takes it 66 yards for the touchdown and a ride on the imaginary end zone pony to put the Bengals up 17-3. Chiefs trying to get anything going on offense but on third and inches Damian Williams stuffed for a loss forcing another Chiefs punt. Ensuing drive third and 11 Dalton with great protection and another diving catch by John Ross for the first down to the 32. Three plays later and the Bengals once again convert a third and long as Dalton looks to throw moves to his right and finds John Ross who makes the catch gets the first down and one more time at the end of the play a face mask on the Chiefs defense so add 15 more to the end of the play Chiefs defense would hold again though as Dalton hits Tyler Boyd but he only gets nine on third and ten and Randy Bullock comes out and puts this one through to push the score to 20 to three Chiefs offense continuing to look for any kind of life and on third and 19 Henny finds Demetrius Harris for 27 yards to 
keep the drive alive. Two plays later, backs against the wall again, and Henny finds Damian Williams for 16 yards, but one shy of the marker. And on the next play, Henny looks for the crosser to Chris Conley, who drops it, bringing up fourth down, where the Chiefs try to pick it up on the ground, but Damian Williams is once again stuffed. Bengals take over. Following the turnover, second 19 after a sack, and Andy Dalton finds A.J. Green for the first down and a pickup of 21. Five plays later, first play of the fourth quarter, and Andy Dalton is going to find a wide open Tyler Boyd in the back of the end zone who gets both feet down to push the Bengals' lead to 27-3. Ensuing drive, Chad Henney looks to throw and finds a wide open Clayton Fedulum, and that would be his last throw of the day as Andy Reid pulls the plug on Chad Henney, bringing in Chase Litton, who on his first career pass hits Demetrius Harris for 10 yards on a first down. Next play, Litton throwing again and hits Chris Conley over the middle, who bulldozes forward for 22 yards and another first down. Next play, Litton makes it 3 for 3, hitting Conley again, this time for 7 yards near the marker. Then on third down, Litton uses his legs to enter Cincinnati territory, but after 3 straight incompletions, 4th and 10, and Litton throws it right into the hands of Sammy Watkins, who drops it, and the the winless Bengals come into Arrowhead and take down a Chiefs team without arguably their three biggest weapons and they really looked the part as the Chiefs only gained 261 total yards and turned the ball over three times. The defense does what it can, sacking Andy Dalton four times but surrenders the big touchdown to A.J. Green but offensively just abysmal as they only get 12 first downs and the Chiefs with major question marks moving forward as they fall to 3 and four and host the five and two Broncos next week in a must win game while Cincinnati heads home to host the one and five Buccaneers. All right, guys, so we lose, and that's obviously a rough one because the Bengals were 0-6 to begin with, but more importantly, we fall below 500 at 3-4, and which is definitely not where we want to be in terms of making the playoffs, but really not too much to say about that one. Definitely not at full strength, but got to figure something out to make do or the ship is going to sink fast. But along those lines, we have a big decision this week on Patrick Mahomes' injury, and if you followed along with the series in the past, you'll know that in pretty much every scenario I start the backup but going back to what I was just talking about I really need to figure out something and we do get Travis Kelsey back this week but going into another game especially against Denver with Henny just isn't something I want to do and I didn't even realize Mahomes was going to be eligible for this before that game and was anticipating actually starting Chase Litton in that game because of how Henny had been playing so we are going to be bringing back Mahomes early and he will be starting the next game against the Broncos in the next video. Moving forward to this week's negotiation, starting with Alan Bailey, who is currently our starting left end. This was another move that was a pretty quick one for me to make as Bailey is a very middle of the road type player. He doesn't really seem to do anything special and whether I re-signed him or not, I'd be looking to upgrade there. So letting him go doesn't really affect me one way or the other. And it's a similar story for the second negotiation of the week, which is the wide receiver, Chris Conley. Conley is an interesting case because he's a major physical talent and as a receiver he's not that bad but I never really notice him when he's out there. He doesn't make a lot of plays and he doesn't seem to get open that often so that's why we're going to be letting him test free agency. But moving on to scouting, there were no new draft stories or tweets this week, so just new players being added to the draft board, starting with a right outside linebacker from Northern Iowa in Corey Booth. He's a second round projection, but only a fourth round true talent, so he may not be as good as advertised. And then the last two are a pair of left ends, and this isn't a very strong draft class for them. There's one first round projection who you guys might remember was Hanson Eaton, who actually had a draft story about him, but then it drops to the fifth round projection so a big drop off there but Courtney Ricks from Alabama and Bennett Harewood from Penn State make the draft board this week as we look for potential options to replace Allen Bailey moving forward. So with that, we start to go around the league with Week 7 scores starting on Thursday night where the Broncos take down the Cardinals 30-27 to in overtime. Moving to Sunday, the Titans head overseas and take down the Chargers. The Browns double up the Buccaneers 28-14 while in the game of the week, the Eagles beat the Panthers 19-10. Jets beat the Vikings. Lions go on the road and take down the Dolphins. Patriots need overtime but still get the win over the Bears. And then in Indianapolis, we have the first tie of our 
season between the Bills and Colts. Jaguars beat the Texans 35-21 while the Saints go on the road and obliterate the Ravens 41-3. Redskins get a big divisional OT win over the Cowboys. Rams on Sunday night go on the road and edge the 49ers 27-24. And then on Monday night, we see the second tie of our CFM as the Giants and Falcons also ends locked up in a tie. So as we take a look at the AFC standings, the Patriots are starting to establish themselves as the best team in the East at 5-2. and two. Dolphins are behind them at 3-4, and four, while the Bills and Jets sit at the bottom. In the North, the Steelers had the week off, and with the Browns' win, they move into sole possession of first place at 5-2. and two. In the South, the Jaguars and Titans both win to move to 5-2 and two as well, and tied for first place. And then lastly, in the West, the Broncos take sole control of the division lead, while the Chargers fall a game back with their loss to the Titans and we sit a game back of them but still a half game ahead of the Raiders who had the week off and still remain in last place. To the NFC, the Eagles move to 6-1 and one and sit atop the East, but the Redskins win over the Cowboys keeps them right behind. To the North, the Packers sit at 5-1 and one while the rest of the division sits below 500, starting with the Vikings at 3-4, and four, while the Lions and Bears trail behind at 2-4. and four. To the South, the Panthers fall to the Eagles but remain at the top of the division while the Falcons tie keeps them tied with the Saints in second place, with the Bucks still in last at 1-5. and five. And then in the West, the Rams win to take a half game lead over the Seahawks who were idle and a two game lead over the Cardinals while the 49ers already have their eyes set on next year at two and five through seven weeks. After a week away, Tom Brady returns as the AFC Offensive Player of the Week for the second time this year. Brady was magnificent, completing 29 of his 46 passes for 381 yards and four touchdowns to one interception to help the Patriots move to 5-2 and two with a 30-24 overtime win in Chicago. The NFC award goes to another former MVP winning for the second time this year in Falcons quarterback Matt Ryan, who also won in week three. Ryan was 32 of 54 for 412 yards and two touchdowns. However, it wasn't enough as the Falcons couldn't pull out a victory and ended up with a 21-21 tie on Monday night versus the Giants. For the fourth time this year, the AFC Defensive Player of the Week comes from a member of the defense that we faced that week. In this case, it's Bengals linebacker Vontez Burfecht. Burfecht was in on 12 tackles with three of them coming behind the line and also added a sack and a forced fumble to help the Bengals earn their first victory of the year over the shorthanded Chiefs. To the NFC 7th year linebacker Levante David takes home the award. David accumulated 10 tackles, all of which were solo and one for a loss. David also added a sack, pass deflection, and forced and recovered a fumble, but it wasn't enough as the Buccaneers were easily dispatched by the Browns at home by a score of 28-14. On to the league leaders where passing yards leader sees both of our offensive players of the week featured in the top five. Leading the way is AFC winner Tom Brady followed by Marcus Mariota and then NFC winner Matt Ryan. Behind them tied with 1,969 yards is veteran Alex Smith and rookie Sam Darnold. Tom Brady also leads the way in passing touchdowns with 21 on the year and a three touchdown lead over Carson Wentz who is in second. Blake Bortles, Jimmy Garoppolo, and Marcus Mariota round out the top five with 17, 16, and 14 touchdowns respectively. Ezekiel Elliott's rushing lead now sits at 131 yards over second place as he's the only back over not only 700 but also 800 yards rushing on the year. Todd Gurley sits at second 55 yards ahead of David Johnson. Leonard Fournette and Le'Veon Bell are fourth and fifth and only separated by four yards. Todd Gurley has found the end zone more than any other running back in the NFL with eight rushing touchdowns. Alvin Kamara sits only one behind with seven and behind him remains a three-way tie between the leading rusher Ezekiel Elliott and a pair of Freemans in the Broncos rookie Royce Freeman and the Falcons veteran Devontae Freeman. This week sees a new receptions leader as Marquez Valdez-Scantling had the week off, which allows for Titans receiver Rashard Matthews to take the top spot. One behind him is Jets receiver Jermaine Curse. Julian Edelman is only three back with 44 catches, while Julio Jones and Browns rookie Antonio Callaway are tied one behind him with 43 receptions. 
Julian Edelman takes over the lead in receiving yards over last week's leader Jamison Crowder, but only by two yards. The league's receptions leader Richard Matthews pops into the top five with 559 yards receiving ahead of a pair of AFC West receivers in the Chargers Tyrell Williams and our very own Tyreek Hill. Keelan Cole added another touchdown through the air this week to put his name alone at the top of the leaders with seven touchdown catches on the year. Jamison Crowder adds two of his own to move into a tie for second place with Tyreek Hill. And then two of the multiple players to have five touchdown catches on the year are the Patriots' Julian Edelman and the Eagles' Alshon Jeffrey. Defensively, Mark Barron leads the way with 53 solo tackles on the year. Zach Cunningham only sits one behind with 52, while Sean Lee is only one behind him with 51. Rounding out the top five are a pair of former SEC linebackers in the Giants' Alec Ogletree, who played at Georgia, and the 49ers' Reuben Foster, who played at Alabama. Roll Tide! Vaughn Miller was shut out of the sack column last week, but added two this week against the Cardinals to take the top spot. Joey Bosa was shut out for the second consecutive week but his hot start still has him in second while Jabal Sheard of the Colts sits at third with seven and a half sacks and Khalil Mack and Chandler Jones round out the top five and then lastly for the leaders Casey Hayward added a pick this week to become the first defender of the year with four interceptions behind him is a slew of players with three interceptions and among them are the Broncos Chris Harris Jr. the Cardinals Patrick Peterson the Rams John Johnson and Steelers rookie Terrell Edmonds. As we look at Week 8's schedule, things kick off on Thursday night with a matchup between the 3-4 and four Dolphins and the 0-7 Texans. Moving to Sunday, the action starts with a potential Game of the Week candidate with the 6-1 and one Eagles traveling to Jacksonville to take on the 5-2 and two Jaguars. And then Patrick Mahomes returns from injury trying to be a hero and get revenge on the Broncos. Huge AFC North game as the Browns head to Pittsburgh with a chance to establish themselves as the division leaders. Redskins at Giants in a big NFC East game, Seahawks at Lions, Bucks at Bengals in the dud of the week, Jets at Bears in another dud, Ravens at Panthers, Colts at Raiders, 49ers head to Arizona, another game of the week candidate as Green Bay takes their 5-1 record to Hollywood to face the 5-2 Rams, then on Sunday night the Saints head to Minnesota looking to exact revenge for last year's Minneapolis miracle, and then capping off the week on Monday night is an AFC battle between the Patriots and Bills while the Falcons, Cowboys, Chargers, and Titans are all off this week. All right, guys, so that's going to do it for week seven. Join me next video as we have an absolutely huge game against our division rivals in the Broncos and look to exact some revenge for that very exciting but also devastating loss we had on Monday night in Denver. Also tune in to find out how Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey do as they return from injury. But like I said, huge game. Hope you guys enjoyed the highlights and everything else this video had to offer. Chiefs Broncos in week eight next video. But until then, thanks. Thanks for watching.